Hey everybody, Tim Kawakami here, TK Show, recording from the home studio. I have an awesome guest, frequent, frequent, frequent guest, uh, my friend, the Giants broadcaster, Dave Fleming. David, Dave is in Milwaukee, where the Giants are about to start a series. We're recording this on Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for being on. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I, I look forward to our conversation. <laughs> yeah, we have little mini conversations before the conversation, but we're not recording those. The good um, thing we're not recording them. <laughs> not talk, we're talking 49ers and many other things. David, uh, I'll just start big picture. We know where they are, 500 team. It's felt like a 500 team. Maybe they were dipped below. Certainly, you know, not a terrible team and not a great team. Does that some something that kind of just seeps into the club of the team? Like, where are the at? What's the attitude? What's this kind of mood around a team that just seems to be at 500 and then unable to get much higher and isn't dropping much lower? I think. Well, uh, I think the attitude internally is frustration because I do think the group believes they're better than this, mm -hmm. and part you know part of that is. You could you could very rightly, I think, criticize the the plan to, to it didn't come together the way they thought it would. Um, but they just dug themselves too big of a hole. Like over the last month, they have like the third best record in the league. They've been a as frustrating as those extra inning losses have been, as frustrating as the offense has been since the all-star break. This has been a, like a well above 500 team over the last many weeks. And and that's because they got Blake Snell going, and that that was a big part of the plan. And so when that got screwed up, when Alex Cobb wasn't available early, uh, you know the whole thing got thrown off kilter, and they just dug themselves such a big hole. It's going to be hard to dig out of it, but I uh, climb out of it. I I do think this group the the biggest frustration is they look around the room and think we're better than we're better than just a five hundred team. Now you're right, like we're a, we're a hundred and 35 games into the year, what 132 games in, whatever it is. Uh, they and they're exactly 500, so it's hard to argue that. Yeah, I mean, I don't always like just bow to the fan grass playoff odds, but they're interesting. There's something to monitor. Uh, I think you know, they were in the teens at the trade deadline, and now I think they're like six percent, maybe less than six percent. Um, David, if you like, I know I don't want to put you in a tough spot, but I'll put you in an easy spot if you're. The Giants. What are what are the signs that this team can make the run this year and is building something that lasts longer than this year? Yeah, those are two different questions, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. can they make the run this year? So, if you go thirty games left, you go twenty and ten, you get to eighty six wins. The Braves are already at what seventy two or something like that. So you're really counting. You need. To, that's 20 and 10 is ambitious. That like they have with a tough, tough schedule. Yeah, tough schedule. Tough schedule. That means winning two out of every three games. Uh hard to expect better than that. Certainly it's possible, but that's like the minimum they need to do to have a chance to get in. And I'm not sure 86 is going to be enough. The National League early in the year, I think when you and I talked, it was kind of a mess and I, we all sort of assume, well that that's good. The Giants are working out some issues. That's going to help them hang around, but the Padres and Diamondbacks have just been outrageously good. Yep. And Atlanta is still so talented, even with all the players they've lost, that it's hard to imagine them not getting to that 86 win threshold. That's why those playoff odds aren't great. But can they play well the last month? They absolutely can play very well over the last month. The second part of the question is like, okay, what's the setup going forward? I think the setup going forward is – is a good deal better than it was, say, 18 months ago. Uh, so I think it's been a year. I know it's frustrating for Giants fans. It's frustrating for me. Like, it's hard to watch a team squander a lot of opportunities, and they have. They've had a chances to win more of these games, to be right in the mix, and they haven't done it. Uh, there have been enough, not just like small positives, but real true positive developments this year that I think it's set them up better for – the future we'll see but i think they're in a better place now than they were a year ago i'm talking elio ramos tyler fitzgerald i'm sure uh bird some song of is a huge bird part song, like yeah. you know kyle harrison i think kyle's one of the pivot players in this whole organization right now because there's so much to love about kyle and yet you know the ceiling was really high when he was in the minor leagues and he hasn't 
approach that yet as a big leaguer. He's so young. He's so dedicated to being good. He's got everything sort of like intangibly that you want, but they do have to help it. They, they still haven't quite unlocked the full potential of Harrison. And in a weird way, Birdsong has zoomed up the list and sort of matched him in terms of, you know, I think most outsiders views of long-term potential Birdsong to me is like, that guy's got a chance to be a difference maker for this team. So I, I put Birdsong right there alongside Ramos and Fitzgerald as like big time positives. Ryan Walker, you never know with relievers, but you've developed a guy who looks like he can be a monster at the end of games and he's still inexperienced and and relatively young. Like, uh, you know, that's a pretty cool development, too. So th- those are sort of foundational pieces, I think, going forward. Uh, Jung Hu Lee, w- we didn't get to see enough of him, but I personally saw enough of him to think that's a good major league player who's going to help this team over the long haul. So I think as disappointing as it's been not to see more of him and get him reps at this level for a learning year, I think he's going to be a good player for a while. Yeah, I, I, I point out maybe this kind of feels like a little bit of a clearinghouse season. Now, we can get to the management part later. And again, that's a tough issue for you. I don't want to put you too much up. But like some of the players, you can kind of like there's a little bit of a cleaving of you've got the you good young players you're going to build around. I don't want to ask you too many specifics about some of the veterans, but I think there are some veterans who will not be on this team next season. I don't think there's any way Wilmer Flores can be on this team next season. A few others I think are in questions. Again, I don't want to put you in a tough spot. But I know someone that you, you care a lot about, and I can tell when you're calling that the Patrick Bailey situation has been frustrating for you. Um, he's hurt now, but like you know, it's got to be something that's kind of running a little bit of a – alarm through this whole entire franchise that this is the second season where he's just hit a wall and not a little wall. He has hit a historically terrible offensive wall for two straight seasons. David, what, what, what do you think is going through the minds of the Giants management there? What do you think is the next step for Bailey? So he obviously incredibly valuable player, immensely great defensive player, hits well in the first half of the season and is a beyond terrible hitter in the second half of the season, two years now. Two years in a row. Uh, hard to ignore that, but you got to focus. I, I I feel like I have to focus on the things that he does well, which he does well right now, maybe better than anybody in the game. Um, that, that defensive stuff from him is just, it's just off the charts good. And as long as we have pitch framing as a part of the game, uh, and it's not just pitch framing, it's how much those guys trust him the clear rhythm you see from Giants pitchers when they're working with him, very similar to what we had when Buster was here for all those years. Uh, That stuff is just too valuable to, uh, they have, this guy has to be their guy. Like he's got to be a big part of this team for a while. And so my own instincts tell me that part of this, because he, I've, I've talked to him a lot about this lately. He says his body's feeling good every catcher is going to deteriorate over the course of the year. Like you might still get hot at the end of the year as a catcher, but your body is going to be beat up. It's just the nature of it. I think the Giants management believes that they got to be disciplined enough to, and it's not just like back off the workload early in the year. It's so tempting with him just to run him out there every day. Uh, So I think next year you might see a little different workload uh, for him early in the season. And my own personal feeling is the switch hitting thing is a big issue. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you think about what's on this guy's plate, like game planning, learning pitchers, uh, all the framing stuff, the physical sort of taking care of your body, and then maintaining two totally different swings uh, when you don't have that much time in the day to work on stuff anyway or energy level to work. That's it's complicated. It's hard to be a switch hitting catcher. And I think we've seen the right handed swing really get out of whack. And so I'm not saying give up switch hitting, but I think maybe the Giants be more disciplined about, you know, finding a partner for him against left handed pitching where you keep his at bats mostly on one side, let him work on that one swing mostly and dedicate his time to that and see if that can help solve the issue. I'm a big believer in him. He's got to be a big part of this team. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have him catch Webb 
and they're going to have him catch Snell, right? That's like, you, I've seen that. It's like with Buster, right? He was going to catch Kane and he was going to catch Vogel song. Not so much Timmy <laughs> that much, but he was like, I get that. Like you, you lock him into three of the three fifths of the starting rotation. And then you work them around that. And then clearly they had Tom Murphy. That did not work out that that was going to be his right-handed catcher was not going to be a platoon, but you can see the, 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 the idea there. Do you feel, I mean, I've mentioned this to Posey myself. Like, do you feel some similarities just leadership wise uh, from that position from Bailey that you felt with Posey? I, it's such a high bar. Like Buster's leadership was way different than probably everybody realized as it was going on. Buster was like, you know, and I mean this as a compliment, Buster was ornery. Like yeah. he was a, he was a demanding teammate uh, a tough guy. If you weren't pulling your weight to be around, uh, Patrick is easy going. Like Patrick is not that way, but what pa Patrick's leadership is the pitchers just love this guy. And ultimately that's like your number one quality as a catcher. Like, cause it's not only that they like his demeanor and he's got a good way about, you just see how he handles the pace of a game. He's got a great feel for if a guy needs a little breather, come out and give him that. But it's not just that. It's Patrick is a savant when it comes to sort of game planning and processing info. He's really like Buster in that way, I think. Like Buster, <laughs> Buster didn't have pitch comm. He didn't have armbands. So maybe Buster had to do it in a different way. That's where I think Bailey and Buster have the biggest similarity to me is the pitchers just truly trust. I go back to, I said this to you before, and we've seen it now with Snell similarly, but when Bailey first came up and Webb was having a hard time with the pitch comm and was calling his own pitches and it was throwing off his whole rhythm. And the first day that Bailey got there, the first time he caught him, Webb just let him call the pitches. And it was like Logan Webb was back to the work fast uh, rhythm pitcher. Like that said a lot. This is this guy's first time catching him in the in a big league game. And Logan was like, you do it. I'm good with you. To me, that speaks uh, about what Bailey brings. Yeah, he's catching Logan Webb for the rest of his Giants career. I mean, I think let's let's mark that down. I'm not, that's when I, when I mentioned Bailey's future situations, like he's catching the best pitchers. Like that's I understand that he should. He's that valuable. If you could just hit a little bit more, uh, everything would be different. He was Another a good season. hitter for a good chunk of this yes. year, not just an okay hitter. He was a good hitter. So yep. it's in that we know it's in there. To me, that's the biggest thing is we know he's capable of that. So they got to get this solved, but it's not like we've never seen it and you're just hoping that it shows up. We've seen it when it looks like what he, he has the capability of being well above average for an offensive catcher. Excellent point. Uh, Another guy I'm interested in is Matt Chapman, you know, slow start, but has been an extremely valuable player from about what middle of May on uh, the defense has been just, uh, you know, perfect. And, and he is a dangerous and not a, you know, not a great, he's, he's low average. He's going to strike out a lot, but he was a dangerous hitter in a lineup that needs them. I, I know there's been some discussion about him coming back. We know he loves playing for Bob Melvin. We know he loves the Bay area. Dave, what's your sense that like just in the organization or in the clubhouse, is this something that is a real thing that could happen or like, is he just going to get some dollars that the, the Giants can't go to? Uh, well, my sense is in the organization, everybody realizes this is a guy that has to be on the Giants going forward that, Hey, we, we hit on a guy who's been a perfect fit for us. He's at a spot where you don't have a natural alternative. Uh, he's been everything you could have hoped he could be. He's not a perfect player, but he's had just a great year and he loves being here and he's a position player who wants to be here. I think everybody realizes we got to make this happen. Um, so, look, it's complicated in season. It's complicated with who his agent is, uh, but I, I would be really surprised if the Giants don't make it happen. And frankly, I would be disappointed if they don't proactively just get it done. Like to me. If you're trying to, I don't want to step out of school here, but if you're if if you're trying to not just change the perception for fans, but also just kind of change the tone around this Giants team and flip the switch from we're finding our way and we're trying this and we're trying that to here is our plan going forward. This is the kind of franchise we want to be. Don't nickel and dime this. Just find the number. Don't like 
start at a number that's low and negotiate up from there and mess around. Just start with your number that you are and just say, let's get this done and send a message to everybody around this franchise that this is a guy who's going to be at the core of what we do for the next several years. Look, the athleticism has not gone away. He's got like the fastest sprint score he's ever had. Uh, he's running as fast as he ever has. He's throwing as hard as he ever has. He's swinging the bat as fast as he ever has. Uh, will he decline at some point? Sure. But he's just, he's an explosive, dynamic athlete who's having a great year and wants to be here. I think he'll be here. Yeah, looking at him against good fastballs early in the season made me wonder. It did. And, and I wondered about it. Um, but I think he's turned that out. He's not nobody's great against 97 and up and, and he's not, but he's not terrible. He's so I, playable. He's, you know, I, I, I agree with you. And I think that is a weakness for him, but I don't think it's a skill, like an explosion skill, fast twitch thing where you're worried. Okay. Now this guy's getting old. I think it's for him, just the way his swing is built. It's like a timing thing where yeah. he gets in these ruts where he doesn't hit those pitches and then he comes out of it and he hits them hard and he's just he's kind of a, you know, for a guy who plays so instinctively on defense, he is a thinker in the batter's box. Mm -hmm. And I think every once in a while that kind of gets in his own way where uh, when he's free and easy and confident, it looks different. The position then is take it. I, I agree with you. I think Chapman is at least 50 50 to return, maybe higher. Uh, but that is the I position. I, I, to me, yeah, it's but, higher. Like okay. I. I think it's higher. You called it on Jung Hoo Lee. I will say that you called that one early. So uh, I trust you on these. Well, that does take a position that I thought was going to be safe from Marco Luciano. Uh, but, you know, maybe that does not have a lot to do with Matt Chapman. It has to do with the way that franchise feels about Luciano right now. Um, I don't know. I clearly, I mean, you know, they said that they, they moved Soler to give Luciano at bats at DH, and that did not happen. Um, and, where do you think he is, David? I mean, you know, again, not asking you to like try to pin down exactly what's wrong here, but is it possible that like, he just is not gonna? It's not gonna happen with the Giants for him. Yeah, possible for sure. Um, I don't think he's a shortstop. I don't. No, I mean, I hate not. to say that. I, 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 I just don't think he is. Um, and I'm not sure. I just didn't see enough of him along the way with my own eyes to know that. I'm not sure why it's taken this long for everybody else to sort of decide that 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 I, look, you can't credibly if you're building your whole team around pitching and the ballpark we play in, I it just it's really hard to look your pitchers in the eye and run a guy out there at shortstop who's not capable defensively at this level of doing it. And I don't think he is like that. I, that's not meant to be mean, but. That's not a big league shortstop, what we've seen so far. I like the at-bats. I still think he's got potential as a hitter. I think as stubborn as you want to be with a guy at that position to give him a chance, in a way now they've hurt their own cause with him in waiting this long to try to think about where else they can play him. I wonder if this offseason, if there's a corner outfield, you know, conversion coming, uh, because a lot of the issues at shortstop to me translate over to second base. I'm not sure why you would expect second base to be a lot different. Um, find a way to get this guy a spot to be comfortable on offense and then see if the battle just play. But uh, I just don't, I, I could, I hope I'm wrong. I hope he, you know, gets healthier even and, and has a great off season and comes back looking different. But the look we saw at shortstop just wasn't, wasn't good enough for this. Yeah. Level. I wonder how much the manager has to say, which the manager has to have to say, right? He's they began camp by saying he's likely to be the starting shortstop. And guess what? They acquired Nick Ahmed because they need Nick Ahmed playing shortstop and they move off Ahmed. Now they've Tyler Fitzgerald is the shortstop. I think that we can all agree the shortstop for the future. Uh, however, the numbers go and this may not sustain and it already has leveled off, but it's still been an amazing run for him and he can play the position. Uh, but then he's. Well, I think one thing. I mean, okay. one thing that'll be interesting this off season is you got two players who are free agents, who are really good shortstops, and are the Giants tempted to? Because you know, second base has been a problem for the Giants this year mm -hmm. too. Now it's nice. The last few days we've sort of seen a little more of the normal. 
Tyro Estrada, but Tyro's Tyro's number is going to be high next year. Like, uh, and he he has not, you know, he certainly hasn't made it a, a slam dunk decision that that number is going to be met. Um, we'll see. He's got a chance to finish this season strong and kind of change that. He's finally healthier. But the great thing about Tyler is he has already proven he can move around and handle it. And so I, I, they're, they're going to have some decisions to make. I think they've seen enough from Tyler to think he can handle shortstop defensively. If you thought you could get somebody premier defensively at that position and slide him one spot over, I, you know, that sounds like an option to me. Um, so that'll be, that'll be an interesting thing this off season to, to follow. I don't think Tyler is, you know, he's just, He's the makeup is so good with him. I think he's happy. If if you just give him a little heads up and a play, he's ha, he can you can move him around and he's not going to bat an eye about that. So I think yeah. that's a possibility. And you can get a better defensive shortstop. I mean, yeah, obviously than than Fisher. He's fine, but I think you, you could definitely do better than that. Who are the shortstop? I'm trying to think. Who are the who are the? Well, Willie Adamas. Thinking? We're about to okay, see yeah, him here in Milwaukee. Yeah. He's yeah. having a big year. He's going to get a big contract. He's having a really. He's hitting for power and he's excellent defensively. And then the, the other one that's a tr intriguing to me is Ha-Sung Kim, who is Jung-Hoo Lee's best buddy and is a super premium athlete who absolutely loves Bob Melvin and dedicates a lot of his career success to Bob's willingness to play him every day, stick with him, champion him. Uh, Bob is a big advocate of Ha-Sung Kim. Um, and he's a, a off the charts, you know, at least uh, – metrically defensive shortstop uh you know you can sort of close your eyes and dream about kim and chapman on the left side of the infield and like okay uh you know we can't sign otani and judge and soto we can do it a little different way like that would be that's pretty enticing to me uh, you'd have two rocket arms on that side of the, of the infield that's for sure and ty, you know if you if you did move fitzgerald to second i like i to me tyler had, would have a chance to be a a really high level defensive second baseman, like any of those maybe limiting factors at shortstop, which I still think he can be a good shortstop, but uh, he would be, to me, he would be have a chance to be an excellent second baseman. Of course, we've gone this far and I'm going to have a lot of Giants fans yelling, okay, you got to bring up Farhan Zaidi's future. And again, tough situation for you, but I posited that I would go another year for him. It hasn't gone great, but they haven't fallen apart. I see the plan. Some of it has not been fulfilled. Dave, just like the arguments for Farhan's side, do you think it's silly to even have this discussion? Where are we just on the future of this management group? Well, I don't think it's silly in that I think Farhan would tell you if Farhan was here talking to you, and I'm sure he will at some point yeah. soon come back on your show. That's like, the plan. So, you know, it's year six. Like, I, it's fair to for anybody to be – asked about like wh where are we going why is why hasn't there been more progress there's been lots of progress i think behind the scenes i think that's it's hard to dispute that that the giants have made big strides in player development the, this year not just the players at the big league level but other guys at the lower levels the drafting has been quietly excellent you know everybody keeps bringing up hunter bishop and uh, Bednar. Yeah, Reggie Crawford's gotten hurt. Bednar's gotten hurt. But gosh, there are a lot of players who've been drafted in the last few years who are already here who are or who are on the cusp of being here. They have a young first baseman who looks like the best Giants prospect in a long time, who was the first round pick from last year, who looks like everything you want in a middle of the order type hitter. Uh, so there's been lots of under the hood positives, but it's still we're, we're, this is big league baseball like the wins and losses at this level are what you're playing for uh so i don't think farhan would dispute that it's fair to talk about um and i think the key for him will be to articulate the short term not just long term but now short term plan to take that next step and it's time like it's beyond time to take that next step and not just be a team that talks about sneaking in or getting in or fighting for the last wild card spot. Be a team that it, that's aspiration is championship level. Like it's time for that. And you know, I, I like if I had a criticism of Farhan, it, it's I 
I, I don't think he's doing it intentionally. Farhan wants to win a World Series just like everybody else does. But the messaging of this franchise sometimes is it comes across as the aspiration is not championship level. Uh, you know, when you when you hear the language of winning at the margins and finding small advantages and all that stuff is good, but all of us, fans, everybody who's a part of the Giants, who's experienced those highest of the highs, the, the, the championship aspirations are why we're all doing this. And I think even, even if it's just a psychological thing of like, here's how we're going to articulate our plan going forward, that switch needs to be flipped now into that kind of mode. And how do we get there fast? Yeah. I mean, I just think practically you can't just say, oh, we tried to get that guy, right? I mean, they're and, and some of that, listen, you have to try to get these guys. And you come in second, you come in second. But I, I've never, you know, it's like you're getting ripped for trying. You, you shouldn't get ripped for trying. You should be, in the end, be criticized if you don't have a good enough roster. And uh, it does come down to can you just get the guys? And I'm not sure they can. But, yes, the, the Willie Adamas level, you know, that is the level I think they can succeed at. Uh, and look, I, like it's has it's been proven out, right? They chased Harper hard. They chased Judge hard. They chased Otani hard. Soto's kind of a different category. Correa they signed, and then that didn't happen. All those guys would have been good. Like they've all been proven right. Chapman is a big win. Blake Snell is a big win. I know it got screwed up in the whole thing, but watch watching Blake Snell. Like that's how you win a championship with a guy like that. Uh, so. You know, the the idea behind a lot of those, it's the other level free agents and the, you know, the ones that really haven't worked very well. Gosman and Rodon worked as one year pitcher contracts, uh, but the position player bounce back from injury, give them a chance to prove themselves. The opt in opt out deals. A lot of those have not gone as well as they thought they would. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to keep winning at that. As we said, at the margins, like you can, but. It's hard to keep sometimes if you get a guy who you think might be a four war guy, he's been a two war guy. He just is, he turns into a one war guy, right? I mean, that's, you go for a, a star and if he's just mediocre, he's still pretty good. So yeah, it's an issue. We're, we're, we're saying the same thing here. I have pointed to the crowd count. I, I know ownership is really dependent on Oracle Park being filled up. It's not going to be filled up the rest of the season. We know that this is, this is what the level is. How closely do you keep aware of that? And how closely do you think ownership is going to go? The rest of these home games are going to be pretty important to see what the number is, see what the belief from the fan base is in this organization. I think that's where it's more important. It's not just, it's not just the pure like revenue from people walking through the turnstiles. It's more like how engaged are our fans? We need our fans to be Giants fans are, are like some of the very best sports fans out there. Giants fans, we have an amazing fan base, but they are they're beat down right now. And that's a problem. Like and that's a problem that everybody needs to be thinking about solving. So I do think that it's important not not from a dollars and cents standpoint of like we got to have our fans engaged. And I think there's been a lot of progress this year. It's been a fun team to watch at times. It's been frustrating at times too. But there have been a lot of nights at the ballpark that have been, to me, almost sort of like the good old days of, you know, the ballpark's filled, the attendance is up significantly. I think the team's been much more engaging and fun to follow. Uh, but you got to build on that as opposed to kind of resetting. Um, and Blake Snell's going to be an interesting one. Like, you know, you got a numbers crunch coming in terms of starting pitchers. Uh, you know, Webb, Birdsong, Harrison are are locked in. You, Robbie Ray, you figure is gonna gonna be back probably. You got Jordan Hicks signed for three more years. The plan is for him to be a starter again. That's five right there. But Blake Snell is a championship caliber player, like he is. Um, and you know, if if you're if you're aiming that high, he's a guy you want on your side. So you know, he's one to. And I, That's, to me, he makes the he, yeah. he he makes the Giants really fun to watch. When he's out on the mound, do you want to watch those games? Mm -hmm. uh, I do. Uh, like he's 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 the baddest dude out there when he's when he's going good.
I used to, when I was watching Giants pitcher with the best stuff since Lincecum, like just stuff. Like it, it just you're I think watching that's fair. I, yeah. I think that's true. I mean, Bumgarner was different in a different category, yeah. but in terms of just like pure wow stuff, I think that's true. You watch Snell in the first inning, and if you see him throwing great, you go, okay, he's gonna it's gonna be zero runs or one run. Like and that, it was my special. favorite part about calling his no hitter was if you go back and watch that game, Javi and I were doing that game, and I bet you on the very first pitch of the game, I said something about, oh, okay. I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was like a perfect first pitch yep. of the game. Yep. And and definitely after the first inning, probably going to commercial or something like, okay, I think we know what we got tonight. Mm -hmm. Like with him, you do sort of know. And uh, that uh, to me, that's really fun. All right, David, I'm sure you're very excited about Stanford and Cal starting up ACC play here. Uh, I got to ask you, Mr. Stanford, um, you're going to be, is it the same for you? Is it completely different? What's it going to feel like watching your Cardinal play in ACC schedule? It will not be the same for me. <laughs> I do have, I do have their first game for ESPN oh, yeah. on Friday. So I'll be there in person. Um, it's not an, a conference game. Um, I don't even know who it's against. Who is it against? I don't even know. TCU. They're playing okay. TCU. Right. Um, you know, so it's not a it, it's no. a reasonable opponent for the opener. Um, look, I I think actually on paper when you look at it, it the, the schedule looks easier to me. You know, they have a chance maybe to the main thing for them right now is find a way to win some games and build some positive momentum back. And maybe in the short short term, it's going to be a little easier to do that. A little. I'm sure the I'm sure the head coach would yell at me for saying that, but I think that's true. Um, it, it, football, look, I'm going to miss all the old rivalries, and if they never come back, that's just a massive loss for everybody. But it's the other sports that that are just yep. going to get killed by it, and the other sports may never be the same. And football can survive. You can get on a plane five times, and if you're good – it solves a lot of problems, and I think Stanford football still has the long-term chance to be a good winning program. Uh, it's the other stuff that that I'm, I'm really worried about. Uh, by the way, that uh, won some gold medals uh, in, just a little while ago. Uh, they had like one of their greatest Olympics of all time, and they've had a lot of good Olympics. Uh, that'll be really interesting. Maybe, well, probably we'll see the effects in, in 28 in L.A., certainly then eight years from now to see if that's – held up. That'll probably speak a lot to how this whole thing is going. That will be sad. I'm not Mr. Olympics and, and a lot of the stuff I don't buy, but the, the Stanford and Cal Olympic machine is fun to watch. It's important to watch. It's important to know it's there uh, and it'd be vastly disappointing if that crumbles. In, in it feels way. like such a, doesn't it feel like such a cultural thing in yes. Northern California? Yes. Like a part of our sporting identity is that. And I'm with you. If that goes away for those two incubators, that that'll be a chunk of Bay Area. If you line up the all time Bay Area sporting greats, it's not just Curry and Willie Mays and Joe Montana. It's a, a lot of those Olympians and tennis players and all, all that stuff is is uh, a, a huge part of the sporting legacy. Golf, where, golfers, where, some golfers. some golfers, you know, it, it would be sad. That part would be really sad. All right, David, I got to have you long. I got to end this with a version of a question I love asking you because you always got good answers. Dave Fleming, what's your favorite movie right now? Hey, you know, I went back and uh, since you, you're asking, I just rewatched. Did you watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? No, I do want to watch that. I missed it when it came out. I, I went I back and rewatched it and I liked it even better. Yeah. And then I went back and I went on a little Tarantino thing recently and watched Pulp Fiction, which has always been one of my favorites for obvious reasons. And I, gosh, I might even like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood more. Mm. Like I really, really liked it watching it again. Uh, that's worth uh, carving out some time. You know, it's a long movie and it was yeah. cool to watch. I watched it on the big screen when it first mm. came out. That was a rewatch for me lately that I thought held up extremely well. That's a good one. Because you know what? I loved Pulp Fiction when it came out. When I watched it again recently, I didn't like it as much. Yeah, it, it's... it's it is a little, I mean, you got, it's a little dated and some of the stuff that was so fascinating about it has been mimicked so many times, yes. you know, it's probably just, it, it just doesn't resonate in the same way that it did. Once upon a time in Hollywood though, is like a, 
really cool narrative story that like leads you along with these little breadcrumbs of where it's going. Uh, so I, I, I really enjoyed rewatching it. Excellent. I will definitely watch that one. Yeah. I just, because you mentioned that and I was just thinking of Pulp Fiction going like, I really, Tarantino is fascinating. I don't love all his movies, but I'm always interested in them. They make you think through them. I went back and Pulp Fiction. I just seem again, I think it's because we've seen the diner scene a million times and it's been on, you know, TikTok or whatever. And we've seen, you know, Samuel L. Jackson make his speeches and it just doesn't feel like it. When I was watching that diner scene the first time, David, like I've never seen anything like this before. Right. I don't know why. Yeah. The rhythm of this is just, it just felt different. And now we've talked about it and read essays about it and listened to Bill Simmons talk about it. And now it's kind of like, okay, that's just something in the past. I do want to see a new Tarantino. I will definitely see. Next time time. you, when when we talk next, I'm going to ask you how you liked it. Cause I, and it's also like so rarely today to me, do you get like true movie star performances Mm -hmm. and Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt in that movie are like, that's what a movie star is supposed to look like. And I think Tarantino is really good at that. At like getting the like big star performances out of his guys. Uh, I'll be interested to hear what you think about Excellent. it. I, I, I probably should have given you a newer movie, but that's no, one I like watched lately that I really liked. We, uh, that's one that's good for me because I've been meaning to watch it. I, I, I should watch it. You talk about the movie star thing. It's a totally different kind of movie, but I just watched the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning for the first time. I just went, my God, like every second he's on the screen, you're going, that's a movie star. That's a movie star. That's a movie star. And there was something special about that. Yeah, uh, he still know. got it the whole time. Oh, like he's Dude, 60, man. like he's 60. He looks older, doesn't look 60, but you just like, I cannot help but watch this guy move across the screen. It's just yeah. something about him. So Fun. Uh, Maverick, talking about Mavericks also like you know, slightly lesser. Like, as always, I'm a little lower level than Dave Fleming is on the taste, uh, the yeah. taste uh, <laughs> level, but uh, I'll go with it. Uh, and uh, off off air, he gave me some book recommendations. We'll come come back to those. I don't want to like just mine the, the Fleming uh, well mm-hmm. here too much. But great to have you on as always, David. Great conversation. Thank you so much. And some TCU game notes. You can put that on your reading. Yeah, notes. yeah. Good. It's you breaking news to me that Stanford starts their season on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. I'm a columnist in the Bay Area. did not know that. All right, David. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah.